Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Exploring Dream Vacations by Travel Pros. My name is Taya Clifton and tonight I am joined by my co-worker, travel consultant, Glenda Stevens, and our special guest, Elisa Roberts, who is the business development manager for Princess. So we are going to step into the world of cruising tonight with one of the best known names in the cruise line industry, which once again is Princess Cruises. They started out in 1965 with just one ship to Mexico, and now they're the third largest cruise line in the whole entire world. So we're excited to see what Elisa has to tell us about their innovative ships and their onboard activities, as well as their fabulous itineraries. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you, Elisa. Great. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Well, I always love to start with this and remind people to keep calm and call your local travel advisor and Travel Pros is definitely the place to call. So if you can't, because I don't know if you can see me or not, but I always like to show you some of my photos and some of the activities that I have done in the past, uh, both in my pink jacket, I was obviously in Alaska, and the one up in the corner where I'm holding that giant piece of ice, well, this I'm down in the Kenai Peninsula, and it's in the south side of Alaska. And the little boat that we are on goes up to the face of the glacier, but the boat doesn't make ice. So what they would do is just get a net and they scoop out chunks of the glacier and that's what they chunk up and that's what we chilled our drinks with so i can honestly say i've had my first glacier margarita it was quite fun uh the other pink jacket with me and the antlers i was on the tundra tour which is in denali national park it's about an eight hour tour and just it, it, you're on and off and on and off the transfer and you there's little stopping points there's walking areas and this particular stopping point was rather educational and they had like three different sets of antlers out and the moose antler i couldn't even lift it so this pair of antlers i'm just really glad i could actually get it in the air and i just told whoever was you know getting ready to take the photos just be fast because it's not staying there long and it was up and it was down. <laughs> so middle pictures. Well, first of all, my picture of my husband and I, we're at the top of St. Martin and it's on Century Hill. And this is one of the shore excursions that you can go, you tube down the side of the mountain, you can go zip lining. And this last, the, the picture right above it is the final step on this um, shore excursion. But at the top of Century Hill, they have this little tiny bar area. And I'm pretty sure that it's to gather that liquid encouragement because the zip line that you see me sitting in the red um, bucket seat, it is the tallest, fastest, and straight down, it goes about 60 miles an hour all the way to the end. So it's kind of our adventure. That's sort of what we like to do. And my final photo, that is me in my matching dress and mask. Uh, I actually sailed on the Sky Princess for Thanksgiving of this year. And it was the first sailing of the Sky Princess in North America. And so it was very exciting. You know, and the, the thing that everybody forgets about is the crew. When we came on the ship, the crew was just, you know, they're clapping, they're yelling, we're all dancing, and we got conga line going, and they are so happy to have us back. So we want everyone to take a chance and, you know, get on, book your cruises, and let's get back to normal. Because, you know, I always ask a question, you know, why do we cruise? Why do you want to cruise? And for Princess, it's all about the connection and being together you know don't just go take a vacation grab your loved ones go with you to go with you go somewhere a new destination you've never been to connect with new people all around the world you know the thing is you can do it on a you can celebrate together with those connections either on a small scale personal scale or a large scale and so one of the things that i always like to talk about is you know celebrate the moment and that's what cruising is all about. You know, how can you do that? We have missed so many activities over the last couple of years because, well, we really haven't hardly even seen each other over the last couple of years. So we've missed graduations, we've missed family reunions, anniversaries, birthdays, weddings, girls getaways. These are opportunities now that we're giving you the chance to celebrate the moment 
and connect with your loved ones. So what have we got to help you with is our new celebration group program, and this is really designed for you and your families. Really for small group top of mind, it's focused on families and friends and all those milestones I just talked about that we've missed out on. So you can talk to Travel Pros on how you can create your own celebration group going forward into 22 and 23. You know, because think about the number of birthdays that we celebrate. 500 million birthdays are celebrated um, have celebrated on Princess and anniversaries. This is your opportunity to get together, make those connections, and go together. So then the question is, where are we going to take all those people? Where are we going to make those connections? Well, if you didn't know, Princess is the leader in worldwide destinations. We travel all over the world. We stop in over 380 different destinations worldwide, travel to all seven continents. But we're not going to talk about the whole world tonight, people. Don't worry. I don't have the whole evening for us. So I want to talk about what we call our close to home destinations. Close to home cruising, this is the Americas. And so tonight, we're just going to kind of see what travels around North America and where you can go. So let's first start up in the Northeast in Canada and New England. If you haven't been to this area, it is stunning. It is a beautiful destination. And I live in Virginia, and it's entirely different shoreline. I think that was one of the things that surprised me most. You know, we're we're used to sand, and that's what our shore looks like. Their shorelines are rocky, and it's just an incredibly different landscape. You know, people go there not just for the sights and the beauty and the lighthouses, but certainly for the seafood as well. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can do the um, Canada, New England. First of all, we do have a seven day itinerary. It is round trip from New York, so it's very easy, very simple. Gets up into St. John and Halifax, Bar Harbor, comes back down to New York. So it's an easy in and out for most people. Or if you've got a little bit more time, we do have our 10 day options that are one ways between New York and Quebec City. So you get onto that St. Lawrence River and some of the really unique destinations of Quebec. And what's very interesting is we also include an overnight in Quebec City. Now you're obviously on the ship, but it gives you a full daytime and evening opportunity to do shore excursions and get to know the area. Again, getting to know those connections. But one thing I want to bring everyone's attention to is cruise tours. Now, everyone talks about Alaska cruise tours because that's what we are known for. But we do cruise tours all over the world. And here in connection with our Canada, New England, we have the historic America tour that maybe you haven't been into Philly and Gettysburg and Williamsburg. You can add that on before you go to New York and do your seven night cruise. Or while you're in Quebec City and it ends there, maybe you've got an opportunity to do the Maple Exploring, go into Toronto and Montreal. So in do Niagara Falls, so it really gives you an opportunity to not only do the cruise, but also do some land opportunities as well. So as we head south into what I think is one of the best parts of uh, the East Coast is the Caribbean. We do travel to all of the top rated beaches. Um, we travel from Fort Lauderdale and we do some mostly our itineraries are seven to 14 days. We do Eastern Caribbean, Western and Southern Caribbean. But we also do have some short five day getaways to make it a little bit easier if you're just trying to you know, try out that little mini vacation. So of the Eastern Caribbean, this is probably our most popular itinerary. Round trip from Fort Lauderdale, stops in Princess Key, St. Thomas and St. Martin. This is actually the itinerary that I did in on the Sky Princess for Thanksgiving. And one thing that's really awesome is our beverage package, which is called is part of Princess Plus and Princess Plus allows for our inclusive drinks, your gratuities, as well as Wi-Fi. The drink package also applies to Princess Key. So when you are on the island, you don't have to worry about digging out any cash. Your medallion will get you that free cocktail right on the uh, beach side of Princess Key. 
Now, as we head a little bit to the west, we have our Western Caribbean itineraries, and this is where your Belize, Costa Maya, Grand Cayman, Cozumel, great itinerary. Um, one thing I happen to, um, I'm all about adventure uh, travel, and when we were in Belize, if you haven't ever done cave tubing, highly recommended. It. it was just fun. You know, everybody had to wear that big, you know, their headlamps on their um, on their uh, helmets as we're just tubing through on this very dark cave. And you're just hoping that whatever's flying around stays wherever it's at. <laughs> And finally, Southern Caribbean. This is generally where our longer cruises will be. And as you see there, it's a 10 day itinerary, it goes all the way down into Grenada and St. Thomas. And certainly one of the most popular Southern itineraries is an eight day and it goes to the ABC Islands and that would be Aruba, Curacao and Bonaire. So one thing you may not know about Princess is that we are really big on immersion programs and our our real goal is to immerse our guests in the destination so while you're in the caribbean what better thing could you do than the rhythm of the caribbean the sights the sounds the junga new bands that we bring on board uh, day of embarkation certainly the food and everybody's favorite while you're on board is what we call parrots in the piazza and we bring on the we bring a uh, a woman on that has these beautiful macaws and beautiful parrots and you can get up close and personal with all these fabulous animals. I wouldn't get too close though, the beak looks too sharp for me. <laughs> so moving over to the west coast, we do that by way of the Panama Canal. And this is truly the engineering marvel of the world. I am convinced of that. And we have the opportunity to get your guests into the rainforest, into the wildlife. And you see our little um, slot down there in the corner. We have a connection with Discovery Communication. And one of the things, if you've ever seen on Planet, you know, Animal Planet Channel, is the Sloth Sanctuary. And we actually have a behind the scenes excursion to the Sloth Sanctuary so you can get up close and personal. A couple of ways that we do the Panama Canal. Uh, one easy opportunity is our 10 day round trip from Fort Lauderdale. So it gives you the opportunity to get into a little bit of the Caribbean, you get into Costa Rica, Cartagena, and it goes into the first locks, which is the Agua Clara locks. You turn around in Gatun Lake and it returns back to Fort Lauderdale. So easy breezy, again, you're going in and out of the same destination. But if you have 15 days, what you might consider is what we call our ocean to ocean opportunities with the Panama Canal. And depending on the time of season, you're either going from the West Coast, which would be Pacific, to the East Coast Atlantic, or vice versa. And it does give you a completely full day of transit of the canal, and you will travel through all three locks. So it's very, very unique opportunity to get you over to the West Coast and Mexico. And as you said, you, you know, Princess began here 1965 on the West Coast with the Mexican Riviera cruises. It's very festive on the West Coast if you haven't been to Mexico. And, you know, there's the there's the West Coast of Mexico and there's the East Coast of Mexico. East Coast is kind of on the Caribbean side. West Coast of Mexico is entirely different and it's just a different vibe. It has different culture and it's also very much in the high adventure. In fact, I do kind of chat about my high adventure here because when you are in Mexico, a couple of opportunities, you can do the 10 day cruises that go into the Baja Peninsula or in Sea of Cortez. Or if you do the Mexican Riviera, and this is the one that I have done, Cabo San Lucas, Mazatlan, and Puerto Vallarta. If you've never taken advantage of this, next time you're in Mexico, look up the shore excursion that allows you to do the zip line. It's 200 meters above a, gush, a gushing river upside down. Been there, done that. And... It, it was it was quite a thrill. And the funny thing was, is I didn't even know it was going to happen. They just looked for a volunteer. It's like, okay, I'll be the idiot for the day. I've raised my hand. Now, they managed 
to tell my husband right before they let go of me. And um, normally, if you've been on a zip line, you always have your hands above your head because you're holding on to the line itself. Well, what they had asked me to do is put my hands on my belt, which was down where um, the seat was located. I was like, okay, well, whatever. And he goes, okay, so just to let you know, I'm going to flip you upside down. And what they ended up doing as soon as we took off, and, and the guide was with me the whole time. As soon as we took off, he flipped my chair upside down. And so my feet were facing the sky. My head was facing the river. It, and then he very slowly pushed me. And I did this 360 you know, degree view of this gully. And it was... I, I'm sure there were a few choice words as, you know, this is all going on, but it was an adventure of a lifetime. I will tell you that. And as soon as we were get to the end, he grabs me, I flip up and I land. I mean, it, it was timed perfectly. Thank goodness. But it was certainly an adventure. You know, not, I don't know that I would do it again now that I know what I've done, but uh, you know, sometimes it's better. You don't know everything before it happens. I'm convinced of that. So keeping in with that whole immersion program, we have our own festive uh, festivities going on in Mexico. So you, we've got the mariachi bands on board. You can we've got a lot of folkloric performances. And I think everybody's favorite are the margarita and the tequila tasting that we do uh, down in the Mexican Riviera region. So while you're over on the West Coast, for all of you wine enthusiasts, don't forget about our California Coast opportunities. This gives you a chance to get up close and personal with some of those locations that do set have all of the wine country. And on our itineraries, we stop in city center ports of call. So it really gives you the easiest access to all of the greatest sites and attractions in the area. So Basically, we're doing four to seven day itineraries. We do a round trip from Los Angeles or San Francisco. And what's very cool is that we also offer late night and overnight stays in either San Francisco or San Diego. So again, it gives you the opportunity to get daytime and nighttime activities in some of these destinations. And especially for San Fran, if you've not done an overnight in San Francisco, it really is a unique and fun destination. So last stop before we head north is certainly our Hawaii departures. And this is the, you know, we're the only cruise line that we do a full season of round trip and we sail from the mainland. So it's usually sailing out of San Francisco or out of Los Angeles. And it, we are going to the beauty, the wildlife and the volcanoes of Alaska. And we will always hit the most popular islands. That would be Kauai, Maui, excuse me, Oahu and the Big Island. Um, the immersion program that we offer here is called Aloha Spirit. So you can really immerse yourself in that whole opportunity of Hawaii. Have you ever tried to learn ukulele? Well, here's the fun story. When I was in the Caribbean, I learned, well, I won't say I learned, I attempted and struggled at the idea of trying to play the steel drums. Now, who knew a big steel hollowed out thing, A, created beautiful sounds as it does, but was as hard to play as it is. So they ask us, you know, in our class, oh, do you want to perform? And I was like, no, I can do bad all by myself. I don't need to be doing bad in front of people. So no, but can't wait to learn to play the ukulele when I'm, you know, on my Hawaii cruise or making one of those beautiful lays. And, you know, and if you don't have two left feet, you might try the hula classes as well who knows so last stop in north america for us is our number one destination which is alaska and what's very exciting for us is that 17 times in a row travel weekly magazine has given us number one cruise line in the world you know we are the number one cruise line in alaska but my very favorite one and this is you know kudos to travel pros we are the number one recommended brand by travel advisors around the world, and that's been 19 years. So, you know, I can sit here and tell you how awesome we are, but what for me is to be able to say the consumer to the consumer that your travel advisor 
is recommending us as well. So, and to that, I tell them and to you at Travel Pros, thank you. So what do we have to offer in Alaska for 22 as well as 23 is already out and about? We do have round trip sailings from Seattle, San Francisco, and Vancouver. Now this would be a seven day, generally leaves on a Saturday or a Sunday. We sort of what I call my easy breezy because you do the inside passage, Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, turn around and come back. So you've got a Saturday departure, Sunday departure. It's, it's just simple for many people. But in order to really do Alaska, you need to do what we call our Voyage of the Glacier Route. And this is a one-way sailing between Vancouver and Whittier. And Whittier is our port of call for Anchorage. And it will still allow you to do the three inside passage itineraries of Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway. But you travel an additional 500 miles farther north and it allows you an additional glacier viewing. So not only will you see Glacier Bay National Park, you will also get to see College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier. And the two things to remember about cruise tours. The top two rated destinations in Alaska are Glacier Bay National Park and Denali National Park. And on all of our cruise tours, which include the cruise, the train, and the land, which are our lodges, our wilderness lodges, all those two top rated attractions are included on all of our cruise tours. Now, what is a cruise tour? It is the three components. You've got the cruise, the ship, that's seven days. And you'll see here the ship docks, that's where it's docked in Whittier. We have Princess offers an exclusive train service. It's called Direct to the Wilderness. It is your transportation between the ship and Denali, and it, you get there in the same day. Now it is a it's about a seven hour trek, but it will have naturalists on board. We'll have people talking about what's happening in Alaska, what you're looking at on this your um, your travels through the tundra. And you'll notice with the the trains, first of all, how close it is to the ship. You literally get off the ship, you walk across the parking lot and you are on the train service. And the trains, you'll notice they are double deckers. So the top level is that glass domed rail car for beautiful viewing, relaxed viewing. And the lower side of the car, this is where we have the cafe cars because you will be on the train for a while. You'll be able to have lunch or um, breakfast. Um, you can just go into the cocktail lounge area, have a, have a cocktail. And you can always take that and go into the open air spots. So you've, you know, if the weather's awesome outside, which usually it's crystal clear and it's just uh, sharp and um, give it a chance to get off, get outside, get some fresh air and take some beautiful photographs on your train trip to our Princess Wilderness Lodges. And we do have five five-star lodges that we own and operate. And that's the one key issue about our cruise tours we own and operate all the components we own our ships we own the train service and we own our wilderness lodges so when you are booking your cruise tour to alaska through travel pros it gives you the knowledge that we own and operate it all so we know where you are at all times and how to make your vacation seamless all the way through so of the five properties here, we've got the Denali Wilderness Lodge. This is our flagship. It is right at about a mile from the entrance to the National Park itself. This is the hubbub. All of our cruise tours will stay at Denali Wilderness Lodge because this is Alaska. So also on the Denali region, we have the Mount McKinley Lodge. Now this lodge was specifically built for its location. It is only 40 miles to the face of the mountain and it has the most spectacular views and it's very remote. Closest town is Talkeetna. It's about as long as a couple of blocks. Super small little town, but it's about 40 miles and it's the closest place and because Mount McKinley Wilderness Lodge, super, super remote. Now, the next three are smaller properties. Copper River is 
east of Denali. And it actually is in the Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Great for, it only has um, about 68 rooms. So very small, very private. Similar to the Kenai. Now I told you in the beginning where I had the big chunk of ice, I was in the Kenai Peninsula. The, the Kenai National Fjords is located here and we have a property right in Kenai. Again, only about 68 rooms, very private, very off the beaten path. The Copper River and Kenai, it takes a little bit longer to get to these two locations, so you will always spend at least two nights at these two. And it, it they're part of what we call our off the beaten path, so it kind of gets you a little bit outside of the norm, but it's a great opportunity. I always recommend to go to one of these places as well, so you really get a full the full view of Alaska. And then finally, our most northern location is our Fairbanks location. It's the Riverside. And this is where you've got the pipeline and you can go, you know, everybody laughs and talks about painting for gold. But I'll tell you what, it's hokey pokey. You're absolutely right, but everybody needs to do it because it was very fun. And just to say, you're part of the whole miners, you know, this is what they did way back when. And it was, it was fun to be a part of that as well. So our last immersion program is our North to Alaska. And this is where we really, again, we're trying to immerse our guests into Alaska. We, while we are in Glacier Bay National Park, and I think oh, something else, a little sidebar here on Glacier Bay National Park. The park itself, they only allow two ships per day and only one ship at a time into Glacier Bay. And to be able to say that all of our cruise tours go to Glacier Bay is pretty phenomenal. You know, we have had a long-standing relationship with the great state of Alaska. So it, it's kind of like for me, if you went to Yellowstone National Park and you didn't get to see Old Faithful, well, what's the point of Yellowstone? Same thing with Alaska. If you don't get into Glacier Bay, it's kind of the same difference. And if you miss out on Glacier Bay, you've missed out on something really phenomenal in Alaska. But while the ship is in there, we bring on naturalists and we bring on the park rangers. And again, they're giving you up-to-date commentary on what is happening in the state and you know are the glaciers are they growing are they receding and what's happening with the frozen tundra and what's really nice and i'm uh, this goes back in the beginning when i start talking about the connections and the celebrations when we were in alaska we decided not to go out on deck where everybody was at we ordered a bottle of champagne in we're having our own personal connection and celebration and you can open up the, the door to the balcony, turn the TV on, and you can hear the commentary. But we had our own private little celebration. It, we celebrated the moment. We are in Glacier Bay National Park, sitting on our balcony with a glass of champagne, having a moment. And I highly recommend it. This is the opportunity to get together and celebrate and just, you know, be thankful, be happy. So other fun activities, you'll notice that we have the dancing bears going on. This is part of our Klondike festival that we do um, on our Alaska sailings. But two that we have there, pictures of the dogs. So I'm gonna start with the puppies. Now, one of the things that we do is we are always talking about the Iditarod and the racing. Well, we have an, an opportunity where we bring the puppies, and it's called Puppies in the Piazza, we bring the future Iditarod racers on board. And they are big, you know, balls of fluff and love. And, you know, they are, you know, puppies are just high energy. These guys are worse. And they play hard and then they just pass out. So they have to rotate the dogs in and out because some need a break, some need a nap, and uh, some are ready to go, but but they are fun. I think it's pretty much a fan favorite is Puppies in the Piazza. Now, the opposite corner with the white dog, that woman with the blonde hair, If for those of you that might be old enough to go back with me a few years, in 1985, this woman, her name is Libby Riddles, she won the Iditarod 
She was the first woman to win the Iditarod, and she was 18 years old. She crossed 1,100 miles of that Alaska tundra, and when our ships were in Juneau, she comes on and does about a 40-minute presentation, pictures of, you know, when she did her race. It It's a phenomenal story, and I just, I shake my head and say kudos to you for being 18 years old and fulfilling a dream like that is just amazing to me. So highly recommend it when you're in Juneau. If you have the opportunity, go to Libby's uh, presentation that she does on board. So I do want to let everybody know as part of our cruise with confidence, you know, we're always trying to look for ways to help your crew, your next cruise be more flexible and worry free. So we have something called book with confidence. And it will apply to any bookings that are made through March 2nd, and they're for sailings through September 30th, that if you need to change your plans 30 days prior to the sailing, we will offer you back. You can cancel your cruise, and you'll receive any cancellation fees back as a future cruise credit. So if you're like 45 days out and you're not feeling it, it's okay. We have this in place as long as you're booked by March 2nd and the sailing is through September 30th. And then because I know everybody's got little challenges with the, you know, the COVID protection going on. If for some reason inside of 30 days you test positive, we are doing the same program. You will receive your cancellation fees back as a future cruise credit because we really want to have you come back at a future time. We don't want you to try to get, you know, if you find out two days ahead of schedule, you test positive. Stay where you're at. We can, we'll make it happen. We'll make all the changes happen. We don't want you to come down and then have to go home because that's no fun. So we are working on this whole book with confidence because we really want to extend your flexibility and make your vacation worry-free. Now, happening right now, through March 2nd, as a matter of fact, is our best sale ever. This is our big sale of the year where we include our drink packages. We include Wi-Fi, a specialty dining because all of our ships have specialty restaurants, a specialty steakhouse, a specialty Italian. And so we're including one free specialty dining uh, per stateroom. And crew appreciation, this is actually AKA gratuities. It's just, we choose to call it crew appreciation and it's stateroom location upgrade. So it's a value of like almost $700 and it's available on all destinations right now, all staterooms and as long as it's three days or longer. But this is our best sale of the year. And for those of you out there that might be part of the military, we want to say thank you by offering additional onboard credit. And this would be onboard spending money, think of it like that. And it's available to active, retire, and disabled veterans. We now have it on, it's available on any cruise or cruise tour year round. And you can actually sign up online. And once you are in our system as a military, you will always have this available to you on future princess cruises you never have to give us your information you know it's a one and done and once you have been recognized in our system you're good to go and then we can uh, give you as a thank you some additional onboard spending money and it's really an opportunity for us to say thank you to the military men and women for all that they do for us so i've given you a little bit about close to home North America cruises. And so my question to you is, where are you going on your next cruise vacation? <laughs> so with that, I want to say thank you to Travel Pros for letting me join them today and taking you on a trip around North America. So thank you so much, Elisa. We really appreciate your time. You did a really good job. Thank I appreciate you. it. I love the personal experiences. Um, it just makes it more personal or relatable, I should say, when you talk about yourself and what you've done. You know what I mean? I, I love all the shore excursions because I feel like that gets glossed over a lot. Right. People, it's briefly talked about, but not so much, you know, the, the detail that you got and the fun that you have. And not to mention your voice is very soothing. I think you should read children's books. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It could be my 
my, you know, it could be my next life adventure. You never yeah, know. Yeah, you, you never know. Um, I, I just wanted to ask if there's, is there anything that you can briefly touch on in terms of safety with the COVID situation, the mitigation processes that Princess is doing to make people know that it's clean, you're okay? Anything to make people feel good right now in today's climate? Well, we will continue until further notice. That, that's all I'm going to say because that's all I do know. Um, right. All of our guests are vaccinated, They and it's children five and above. Everyone that can be has to be vaccinated. And, you know, there's the next question about um, boosters. We're not requiring that. The CDC is not requiring it. We have to kind of follow their regulations on that. Right. We are requiring negative COVID tests two days prior to the sailing. And we are having, you saw me in my mask, and the mask wearing on board is really point to point. And so when you're going from, you know, the dining room to a show lounge, whatever, it, it, once you get to where you're going, the mask can come off. It's, it's much more relaxed on board. I think, you know, people have this, they're frantic that, oh my gosh, you know, I have to be masked at all times. It, it's very relaxed on board. And that's what I found at Thanksgiving. Um, and the other thing, you know, as far as, you know, our, our ships are always been very clean and, you know, all they've done is continue to just upgrade it and continue the protocols that we've always done. We have a majority of our ships, even before the pandemic, had hand washing stations going into the Lido which is where the um, buffet is located. Right. All of our ships now have that. So we were already moving in that direction that we were always encouraging people, you know, wash your hands before you get into the Lido area. Now, I will tell you the one thing that um, in Lido that I was most, I think I was most apprehensive about, and it used to be a self-serve. Everybody's buffets were self-serve. And now they are crew serve. In the beginning, I thought, oh no, this is there going to be like this ginormous long line because you know, it it was amazing. They, I think it actually went faster in the buffet lining having somebody else do the serving. They have it down to a science. <clears throat> they absolutely do. And you know, and the other thing on board, everyone was. You know, you get into the elevator, for example, everyone has their mask on and everybody's chattering away. And there was such a calm. People liked the fact that they knew everyone on board with them were vaccinated and they got on board with a negative COVID test. So there was a different calm on the ship that I have you know, experienced and everybody was, you know, we all would forget our masks. You know, right. everybody did. You know, I'd be at the pool and you go in to go, you know, go into, go to the restroom, whatever. As soon as you, the doors open, you go, oh, time out, I forgot my mask. <laughs> and and it was all self-monitored. You know, I we I saw it every day. People would be like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Sorry. And then they'd run back and get it. And so it was, it was self-monitored. It was by no means did anybody ever make anyone feel like, oh, you don't have your mask on. You know, <laughs> it was never like that. Well, I mean, I just wanted you to reiterate that. I think um, I think you guys have it down to a science and, and everything. I just know with the cruise lines, it's it's just more in the media, like we were talking about earlier, than anything else. So just give a just give that extra little sense of security there. But Glenda, do you have any questions or anything? No, I don't. You did a great job, and uh, she did. She covered cover. everything. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. We will let you know um, if we have any future questions. We do get a lot of views on this, but appreciate your time. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you so much. And you guys thank have a, we are starting off 2022. We're going to have a great year. So thank we you are. for part of it. We are. Thank you. Have a good thank night. You. Good night. Bye-bye.